Uh, talk about UFC 236 um, coming along, coming up. It's it's a decent card. It's not- okay, it's a very top heavy card, B. So I'm going to ask for the sake of the audience at home, them lower level fights. Let's go on and what are you talking run about? through that. What are you talking about? You don't want to. You don't want to talk about no anybody on the lower level. No, we can talk about them, but let's you know, let's not give them more time than they're due. Yeah. Oh no. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know. You know. We, you, you know you, I A couple of them is like OFAB versus. Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OFAB and Rando on early prelims, baby. <laughs> and they are definitely not popping for PD. <laughs> if I, yeah, you know, if I had the time, I would draw that picture tonight. Yes. That if I had be. the time and I was a meaner person, I would draw oh that picture. But I'm, God. I'm not. I don't, and I'm, I'm not. So it is funny. It, it, it would be funny, and you would, you probably get about ten thousand new uh, followers. <laughs> All right. So um, the um, of the early prelims. The oh, we do our early prelims. I'm just, wow. It, it just give me twenty seconds, and then I think everything will be all right. Okay, are, okay, okay. You are not. What's a the story, B? You are not a millennial. Why are you What's acting story, like B? you can't? You, come I'm on. I'm terrified. I'm terrified that we're gonna be sitting here no. talking about, you know, Stop it. Su- 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 <laughs> Andre Sukumata. He is Sukumata. He is. He's a. He's a. He's a. He's an exciting fighter, but his fight IQ is like three. Like it's not good. But so he's probably gonna lose to Mateo Jackson. But anyway. Curtis Mil- Curtis Melinda is a fighter that I really like. He was just on a main card, but he lost, got dominated because he has no ground game at all. And so he's taking on Bilal, uh, remember the name, Muhammad. And um, he's from Chicago. Uh, so and he's a, he's, Bilal is mostly, I don't want to call him a brawler, but that's the style that he's most comfortable with. Um, he cannot out, this is a, this is a good fight. This is a very good fight. This is a fight that could be on a main card on most events, right? And it's the featured early prelim. Um, he can't beat Curtis Melinda striking. He, he can't. He's going to get knocked out if he fights that way. Um, so if you're look, but I have a feeling that he might do that. <laughs> I have a feeling that he might try to do that. He if he if he stand if he tries to stand and strike with Curtis Melinda, we might see uh the most memorable knockout of the evening because it's going to end bad. It's gonna end bad, but um, I, I watched that fight when he fought Dos Santos. Uh yeah, but yeah, he 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 looked terrible. He looked like he could do. He has man. nothing on the ground. He has nothing. Yeah, that that was bad looking. It was that bad, was really bad was, looking. And this is a really quick turnaround. So yeah, if you think about it. That how much work could he have really have done on his ground game in this short period of time? So. Um, that part scares me. So if Mal- if B- if Bilal fights smart and uh, gets this fight to the ground, then he has a chance because Bilal is better on the ground than Melinda. But Bilal's not the level of Brazilian jiu-jitsu artist that DeSantos is. So I don't know if he'll really truly be able to expose him in the same way. So it's interesting. Uh, two good fighters, but I, I am going to take Melinda in that fight. I think that um, I think he'll win it. So. Is there, is there any other fights on that card that no, are uh, not on okay. the on the, well, I mean, on the, the prelim early the, prelim? The early prelims are a good set of fights for uh, a um, a serious MMA fan. Like if you're a serious MMA fan, you probably know every single fighter on this card, right? There's there's nobody that's like, who is that guy? You know what I mean? the The closest one is Randy Costa, and he's fighting Brandon Davis. Uh, Brandon Davis is a is a I mean, dude, he is a all action fighter, all action fighters. He he doesn't have bad fights. So that's now that's the one thing about this card. There are a lot of fights that look great on paper, right? In terms of all action, they may not be contender guys and girls, but there's a lot of there's there's about five fights on here who I that I think have uh, fight of the night capability. So for that reason. That's something. You know, the funny thing, though, is we look move over to the mid prelims. I actually think the early prelims are better fights than the mid prelims. That happens sometimes, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I think that I think that the the matchups are actually better because I think there's a lot there's a few matchups on the mid prelims that don't appear to be all that um, competitive in my opinion. Um, the the featured prelim on this one, Jalen Turner against Matt Steamroller Frivola. That okay, Matt Frivola is a difficult person to miss if you swing a punch. He. he you know, Ronda Rousey's uh the little thing they have the video that the gif when they go head movement, head yeah. movement. Yeah. He doesn't do any head movement. He's coming and he's throwing big shots, but he's he's easy to hit. Jalen Turner is extremely uh skilled, long striker, and I think he's gonna detonate Matt Frivola. I think he's gonna detonate him. It's it's gonna be a memorable finish, uh for sure. Cause Matt Frivola, Matt Frivola is a tough guy. Constantly comes forward. He's physically strong. But, dude, Jalen Turner is super tall. He's got all kinds of uh, uh, length uh, and reach advantage and just a, a, a superior striker to me overall. So, But, yeah, move on to the main card. Um, and when you said top heavy, you definitely – because there's some fights on here that I think are kind of – like this This Eric Anders-Khalil Roundtree fight, that should have been on the prelims. Like – Totally. Yeah. To I, I I don't it ain't it's yeah, bro. It's Khalil Roundtree is one of the more overrated fighters out there. I think Eric Anders is along the same lines. I think mm-hmm. he's um I think he's overrated too. Um and I mean Eric Anders is a big strong football player. You know, that's what he is. And I think um, you know, he's his game is advancing a bit, but not not quick enough. To, especially to be the age that he is too, um, I don't. Yeah, I, I, that fight doesn't excite me. I have no idea who's going to win, so I guess that's a good thing. They both <laughs> they both big strong guys that can crack um, and good athletes overall. But um, yeah, I'm not um, I'm not super excited about that. Ovin Saint Prue always has good fights, and Nikita Krylov does too. I think this is the second time they fought. To be honest, I think I remember them fighting before. Back when Nikita Krolov was in the UFC the first time before he went away and came back. That's a decent fight. Um, Alan Juban against Dwight Grant could be a very exciting. Both of those guys are action guys. Um, but the co-main event and the main event. Who do you have with Kelvin Gastelum and Israel Adesanya? Here we go. Talk about people who know how to fight. <laughs> All those other people know how to fight, too. I'm too high on the UFC championship level, you know. And when I say championship, I mean people who have a chance to threaten people who would fight for the belt. I don't – so I'm too, I'm including spoilers. My thing is, you know, when we start talking about the, the Knicks versus the Bulls, I'm like, you know, don't nobody care about this but Knicks and Bulls fans. No, <laughs> so – I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You, it, it's a couple <laughs> of those guys – Curtis Melinda has it has talent. He has he's on that level. Lauren Lauren Mueller has talent on that level. Well, that's why I always, and and some of these people I'm aware of. Some of these people I've seen fight. But for me, it's about is there an up and comer that you know shouldn't have been on this card this low that we need to be, be paying attention to. And that we've would, kind of discussed that. Would, that. that would be Jalen Turner. That would be the one yeah. I would say. So Gaslam and Adesanya. So the interesting thing about this. Okay, Adesanya against Anderson Silva exposed a few things about Adesanya that when he was just, you know, shooting up the charts, people thought, you know, they automatically now they go to John Jones when a guy starts knocking people out. Who's going to be the next John Jones? That's the thing. Adesanya does not have incredible knockout power to me. It's he's a good striker. You know, maybe an overall great striker. I don't know what he's like on the ground against high-level competition uh, on the ground. And Gastelum's a really, really strong man. But speaking of not having knockout power, uh, I mean, Gastelum's never been knocked out, which is, you know, great. So Adesanya you're probably not going to knock him out. But for Adesanya to beat him by decision, you're looking it up. <laughs> what am I doing? You said it. You, what, Are you looking I, it up? Looking up what um, part? Uh, what what are you looking up? Uh, I'm just I, I pull I pulled back up the UFC um the, the matchup screen. Yeah. But yeah, Adesanya, 
Would this be the first fight he loses? I don't think so. I think he wins by decision. But if Gastelum takes him down, and this is the first fight where he loses on the ground, I wouldn't be surprised. But my my gut tells me that Adesanya keeps his distance, picks at him, uh, outclasses him as a striker, and wins by decision. Yeah, I, I think overall I'm in the same place in terms of the way the fight has to take it take shape i do not think that he will be able to stay off the ground this entire fight though uh gaslam's a gaslam's a good fighter yeah gaslam's a good fighter and gaslam's a complete fighter and gaslam gaslam is a better athlete than he looks right when you look at him he doesn't look like he's all that explosive or anything like that but he's a better athlete than he looks and honestly he's already beaten a guy who has a similar style to um, Adesanya. Um, he beat him in the long time ago. It was in the Ultimate Fighter finale when he took on Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall and Israel Adesanya have some similarities uh, in terms of fighting style. Um, both of them are extremely maybe economical with their strikes to a fault. And for a worker like Gastelum, who constantly brings it and brings pressure and attack, body pressure and strikes, I think that that could be a problem for Adesanya, um, especially because Adesanya, to me, what I've what I've noticed about him on the ground in the brief times that we've seen him on the ground, and Marvin Vittori was able to get him down uh, in his UFC debut against Nicholson, I think is the, is the guy's name we fought in the first fight. He was able to get him down briefly, but Vittori was able to actually get him down and keep him there for a little bit of time. What I've learned about Adesanya is he's pretty decent at getting up, right? Yeah. But getting up against one guy is totally different than being able to get up get up against another guy. But right? can't you say the same thing in terms of closing the gap? Because, I mean, Adesanya is super skilled and super tall. He's super tall. He's super skilled, but he's not extremely active. And that's the thing about it. That's why I don't. It, it similar fight, very similar fighting styles to Uriah Hall. Not quite as tall. I mean, your uh, Hall's not quite as tall as Adesanya, but similar fighting styles. And Gastelum was able to neutralize Uriah Hall's offense, the bit, and, and avoid the counter attempts that he was trying to do with pressure. He simply outworked Uriah Hall. Now. Adesanya has higher fight IQ than Uriah Hall. That's the key for me. Is his? I think Adesanya is a game plan guy, mm -hmm. and he knows what Gastelum wants to do. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is. Can Gastelum work without taking damage? Because I think part of the reason Adesanya isn't active is because mm -hmm. he's strategic and careful. And mm -hmm. when you sometimes when a guy's a worker, that works to their advantage because they're able to make a guy uncomfortable because they make it sloppy mm -hmm. sometimes it works to their disadvantage because they wind up losing a lot of health mm -hmm. on the way in yeah and with a reach advantage that great and adesanya being so accurate that's why i'm like i, I feel like you know it, uh, it, even a guy like gastelum how long does it take before he becomes more careful uh, he's got to get he's got to get touched up. He's got to get touched up. Yeah. Well, it's not he's not going to just get more careful just off a of GP. He's got to get touched up. And he's, so it, it, Adesanya is going to have to make him feel it. Uh, so I, I think the two most important fights to look at, because uh, all fights are different. Everybody, you can have uh, two guys who stand the exact same height or and, or you can have another guy who fights a similar style. But it's different because this is this guy and that's that guy. But the two fights you want to look at in Gastelum's past that will potentially tell you the most about what might happen in this fight is against Uriah Hall and then against Neil Magny. Neil Magny is an extremely tall, tall fighter for the weight class. And he pulled an upset over Gastelum, uh, split decision, uh, victory. And um, Magny, but see, Magny is a high level wrestler, very high. He's really super long and lean. And he did use his jab to kind of keep Gaslam at bay in that fight. But he's a really high-level wrestler. So even when the fight went to the ground, he was in his element. Um, Adesanya will not have that benefit, right? Um, so I actually have Gaslam winning this fight. You have Gaslam, okay. I have Gaslam winning this fight. I think that unless 
unless Adesanya is able to do something in this fight during the process of closing the distance, or unless his ground, his, his takedown defense and his work from the bottom has drastically improved. And, and, and I'm not trying to paint Gaslam as, I mean, Gaslam is not Matt freaking Hughes. Okay. He's not right, like right. the great, I'm not trying to paint him as that, but he is a much better wrestler. I believe than what Adesanya is. So we will see. We will see. Yeah. Any it's, it, yeah we'll see. I was we'll going to say, I, I understand because this is a fight that, there's a way for Gaslam to win, clearly. Absolutely. We both agree, and we both agree Absolutely. what that way is. Mm -hmm. The thing that pushes me over the edge towards Adesanya is I, I'm looking at Gaslam's fights, and I feel like Adesanya is the best opponent he's had mm. in a long time mm. um, that he, you know, hadn't lost to. Oh, that he didn't lose to. Okay. okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, in terms of people he's beat. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, ugh. The guys that you beat that were similar aren't this quality level, and those fights were a long time ago. So that pushes me towards Israel. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think I, I think. Now, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't be shocked if if Israel Adesanya wins. I wouldn't be shocked. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But Gaslam is just one of those guys. You, you know, you know what the the boxing equivalent to Gaslam is to me. The boxing equivalent to Gaslam is Danny Garcia, right? Danny I'm going to have to take your word for it. Okay. <laughs> and, and Danny Garcia is one of those guys who you look at him and you're like, why is he so, why, why is he, why is he 32 and two or whatever his record is somewhere in that range? Why is he like you watch him and you expect him to lose because nothing jumps out at you about him for him, but that he's special. Right. And it, just about everybody of any caliber that he fights you tend to think the other guy is going to win. But somehow, Danny Garcia's only lost two fights. You yeah, know? and if that, was, if that was Gastelum's history, I would agree. It, it almost it, is, though. It almost but is. A on lot, a, it's on not an MMA it's, level. Because you, you, you know, people lose more fights in MMA than they lose in boxing. Yeah, but even with that, you look at a lot of his recent wins as older people, people that aren't as good as Izzy, and then there's a loss. And, and I just feel like Israel is, you know, the most polished athletic so, person. You don't think Jacare is as good as Israel? He's 40 years old, though. Man, I'm Is he a, as good as 29-year-old Israel I'm, Adesanya? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, if Jacare fights Israel Adesanya, if there's one takedown, Israel Adesanya will never stand back up. If that might, I mean, from a stylistic standpoint, that might be true, but we agree that uh, Gastelum, matchup wise, because of his wrestling background, isn't as, as at a disadvantage against Souza the way Adesanya would be. But in terms of just overall skill and quality, especially as a striker, I think he's dealing with a different beast in Adesanya than he's dealing with, with Souza. Yeah, I, I think he is, but I think that there, the thing about the thing about Jacare is that Jacare is effective. In both stand up, his stand up has gotten a lot better. I really wish that he had moved his training camp to Florida five, six years ago, where he because his striking has grown exponentially since he moved his camp to, to Florida. I wish he had done it earlier. Um, but he's effective in both stand up, but and on the ground. But on the ground, he is among the greatest that ever has has done it, and he's in fantastic shape. So his forty is not everybody else's forty. I think it is though, because in his last seven fights, he has three losses, and he basically was unbeatable in like if, the last if you not eight at, fights before that. If you look at who he's fought, and you look at the the actual fights, because to be honest with you, I thought he beat Gastelum. That I, I thought he beat Gastelum. He knocked out Chris Weidman in a fantastic fight. He lost to Robert freaking Whitaker, who is a monster. And then in the other fight he lost besides that was Joel Romero, who is an other monster. And he and that lost was a them great by fight. a split decision. So Yeah, it was a great, yeah, great fight. And, and my thing isn't that Yakare is trash, but he's older. And it's what I said, it's what I said to you about Woodley before the Woodley fight. I'm like, once you get over the age of 36, mm -hmm. every fight is a how are you aging fight. It is. And it's, it's a barometer. Is is this the correct. night? Is this the night fight? Is this the night? And yeah. so you know, it, it, I, will look, I look at it differently than if he fought Souza 
four years ago, three years ago, right? And Adesanya is approaching his MMA prime. Yeah, I think so, I think I, I think he's smack dab in it. But you know, here's the thing. I was very like I the more I like as I um as I discuss this, right? As I as I the more I discuss Adesanya, the more I'm realizing how unimpressed I was with the Anderson Silva fight. Because I, I didn't realize how unimpressed I was. But because of the way he looked in that fight, my the his aura of invincibility. And of course, obviously, I'm just using. Well, that's that what term. I said in the open. I, I'm, right? I'm, I'm is not that, using I, that term, I, but it, nobody's truly in, invincible. No, I know but what you mean. The aura, that whole, you said that, the aura yeah, that whole thing, right? It doesn't look as strong to me. And I, see, and this this is exactly my point, though. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, and that's what I said in the opener. That you look at the Anderson Silva fight, and you can see some holes in his game. You know, and you look at other fights with the Silva fight in your mind, and you're like. Hmm, you look at them a little bit differently. He's not this, he's not John Jones, what I said in the beginning, right? He's not yeah, some guy that I'm like, however can he be beat? I see a path to victory. But even with that, and it's almost especially because of the silver fight, he was, the silver fight was what it was because Adesanya got hit a few times and fell back on his intelligence. Mm -hmm. I, and I that's think, from his. Know, I, think he gets, I think he gets scared to get embarrassed. Well, again, fell back on his intelligence because mm -hmm. once he was aware that he could be embarrassed, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, I'm not going to be the guy that got beat by 43-year-old Anderson Silva for his first loss. No. Yeah. But and, I, Which I means it's agree. on the table. I would agree. Right? I would agree. And so Anderson hit him a couple of times, and he was very open about this. He said, I didn't see where they were coming from. So once I know you have that ability, I'm going to fight you to win. Yeah. And, that and you, know who, you know who did the same thing? Uh, Daniel Cormier. Uh, Daniel Cormier, when Daniel Cormier fought Anderson Silva, um, mm -hmm. he, he fought him because John Jones had popped and yeah. uh, they, he couldn't fight. And so he got, he got pulled off the table. I, this was UFC 200. It was the Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. mark. It was that same card. And uh, Anderson Silva caught Daniel Cormier with a couple shots. Wah, 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 wah. And at first, because at first, Daniel Cormier was fighting him in a very respectful manner, right? right. If, if that's even possible. But once he got caught a couple times, he said, oh, no, you're going on your back, old man. And right, right. Forget so, this. And, and I, and I it's, play it's, that game with you. It's wrestling time. It's wrestling yeah. time. Because and that... Israel's version of that is to snipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so my thing with Gastelum, I believe a if Gastelum's at his best, if he's the best Gastelum we've ever seen, then he can do what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen evidence of – the kind of guy who can, of the Cormier, really, who can say, you know what? I'm wrestling this. I ain't going to stand out here and get picked at all day. See, that's, that's, see, that's, that's why I give Gaslam. That's why I think he can win. And that's why I think he will win. Because when you go to fall back on your bread and butter, if your bread and butter is wrestling, you have a much better chance of winning because wrestling is a much, wrestling is like, Wrestling is like the, the 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 MMA equivalent of speed in baseball. Speed is yeah. never speed is never in a slump. Mm -hmm. you, if you fast, you fast. It doesn't matter if you're putting the bat on the ball well. If things are going bad and you can't get a hit, you can lay a bunt down because you can try to beat it out and get to first base that way. Wrestling, is which the I noticed, your Barry Bonds wasn't able to do. See, you know, here's the problem. <laughs> Here's the problem. Barry, you, you have a bunt rating in the show. And I could not give Barry Bonds a high bunt rating because that would not be a realistic. And I'm you know talking how about I am. how many times you got on first base and didn't make it to second. What? What? No, I didn't get on first base a lot. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. So who who we got? So we we basically agree on this fight. We just have a different perspective on no, it. No, we don't. I think I got Gastelum. You have out of science. No, what I'm saying is we agree on the, how each person wins. We yeah. agree on what the matchup is. It's just a matter of in the coin flip, what's more likely. You think it's more likely that Gastelum rushes him down? I think it's more likely that. Israel is able to force Gaslam to be conservative, find a way in, and that if he, him spending that time finding a way in and not taking damage is a decision in Izzy's favor. Yeah, yeah. I, and I mean, like I said, I wouldn't be shocked, but we'll, we'll yeah. have to but, see. But we, we agree. We make a different picks, but we agree on the match. Right. The way, the way it has to happen is yeah, a yeah. different result. So, all right. So, um, blah, 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 blah. All right, main event. 
So, yes. oh, I forget. We forgot to mention that fight is for the interim middleweight title, and it's being fought for the right. interim middleweight title because Robert Whitaker is out with the abdominal issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, whoever wins this fight will fight Robert Whitaker later in the year. So, there's that. Um, so, all right. So, the next fight is a interim lightweight title fight between, and the reason why that uh, championship is a bit on the shelf is because of what we've been talking about with the brawl with McGregor and her uh, Habib Nurmagomedov. Uh, Nurmagomedov is not uh, eligible to come back until September, so he can't defend his title before then. If you have this fight now in April, you give whoever wins this fight five months to prepare, to recover and repair for Habib in September. So that's why this works. There's also on the table that Habib could fight Tony Ferguson, which this fight has been scheduled four times already. <laughs> Somebody gets hurt or something. The last time it was scheduled, Tony Ferguson fell on a stage back uh, on a stage yeah, that was crazy. at a press conference and tore his ACL and could not fight. So it's like God, it's like God don't want them to fight. It's it's, it's it's like it's crazy. It's something going on. I don't know what's going on, but it's been it's been so many times that this this fight has been signed. As a matter of fact, the last time it was canceled, Dana White said, "I am not scheduling this fight again." So we'll see what happens. But uh, Tony Ferguson has been having some personal issues, but he has been recently cleared to compete. So he's supposedly ready, and he supposedly wants Nur- Nurmagomedov, uh, and you can make a strong case that he deserves a title shot even more than this winner. Yeah, in the octagon, he's earned it. Obviously, he's been dealing with what seems like some anxiety stuff. Yeah, um, so I, some some sort of personal issue going on. It's you know, yeah, you know, seemed got, it got, like it got kind of scary. Uh, so, but I, I hear that he's like you said, he's back on the up and up. So yeah. this fight, who you got? Um, I got Holloway. I got Holloway. I got Holloway. Um. I just think that Max is Max. I, I think Max has the most impenetrable stand-up game of any fighter in in the sport right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, and it's so funny because if you watch Max. It really doesn't look like there's anything, oh, my God, glamours and lights going on with the striking game. He literally squares with the left foot in front of the right foot. He keeps his hands high. And his reflexes are so good for parrying and countering with straight shots. You very rarely see Max Holloway throw anything that's not straight. And he just breaks guys down with constant pressure and straight, accurate strikes. Doesn't lift his foot off the ground much. <laughs> you know, it, it's really crazy. But And you see these high-level wrestlers sometimes. I mean, he doesn't fought that many high-level wrestlers. But you see guys like uh, Brian Ortega just incapable of getting the fight to the ground. Brian Ortega is one of the freakiest submission guys you're going to ever find. I mean, insane. Is it's it but trying to penetrate Max's stand-up game is is to me it's one of the like three to four most difficult things to do in MMA today. And I just don't and now Dustin Poirier Dustin Poirier is a really good wrestler and uh he's a very smart fighter. Mm-hmm. And he beat Max seven years ago via submission, but that was baby Max. That's right. not that's not this guy no. today. For for the audience playing at home, Max hasn't lost a fight since LeBron was on the Heat. <laughs> <laughs> Which, <laughs> for clarity, right? Yeah, it's it's so, it's, it, it's been a long obviously. I you know I need to see it before I see it, and until Connor comes back and fights Max Holloway. There's nobody. Oh, or, oh my God. You, know. you don't know how much I would love to see that fight. Yeah, yeah. So I, I in mean, that sense, I would like to see Max win. It, it, we don't talk about rooting a lot, but I think in terms of the division, if Max is good enough to win this fight, because uh Poirier's not now, now you know now you know Connor beat Max already too, though. But that yeah, was he beat both of them though. Yeah, that was Max. That was young Max. He he beat both of them though. Yeah, he beat Poirier too. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Poirier is a worthy opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, but if Max does beat him, and if he handles him, then Max is in the discussion, and we're having a four-way discussion in this division, and it's suddenly become possibly the most interesting division in the UFC. And you, some, um, people would make the argu- some people would make the argument that it already is. So, yeah. you know, um, yeah, I, I just think that Poirier is Poirier is someone that I have seen overcome with strikes like overcome with the vol with his opponent's volume and being rendered to a point where he's unable to answer right um and i can just see that happening with holloway he's yeah. he's he needs to take him down he needs to take him down but needing to take him down is like needing to win the lottery but you can't quite find the numbers <laughs> You know, so I, I, yeah, I got, I got Holloway, and and, and the, the the crazy thing is this: Holloway's moving up a division. Yeah. So, and I didn't even mention that in my assessment of the matchup. He's moving up a division. Poirier moved up from the division as well because he started off at one forty five, but he's been in it at one fifty five, settled in. This mm-hmm. is Holloway's first fight at one fifty five. So this is is this is interesting and significant, man. But I do think Holloway wins. And I'm going to be honest with you. I I don't know what fight. Like, Dana's going to give that fight to Holloway. If Holloway beats Poirier, he's going to give Holloway and Erma He is. Mm-hmm. He is. And he's going to probably try to book Connor against Tony Ferguson. Against Tony, which makes sense. With that, that's what, but I honestly think that Tony deserves it. Tony, if you want to do it right. Tony deserves the, the issue the issue is if I'm Dana and I'm thinking Tony does deserve it, I want Tony to have ample time to get well for a championship fight. Mm-hmm. You know? So mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that fight wouldn't happen. I, I think ideally they might want it to happen on the same card. You know, they might want it to happen on the same card because and that's a mess in itself, dude. I don't even know if I want Conor McGregor's people in the building with Habib Yeah, yeah, seriously. I, I agree even, with you there. I don't even know if I want that. So, Because uh, to be honest, I never want to see them fight again. Never. Yo, no, no, so, there's no reason to. I, I never want to see them fight again. And, and it ain't even because of that. I don't want to see them fight again because I don't think that those two elements can coexist without something horrible happening. Yeah, because they got to do weigh-ins and press yeah, conferences and all that. Yeah, I and yeah, I think, think I think Habib is unreachable in that. I think Connor, Connor is always selling something. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah. but Connor is officially retired right now. No, so. he can't. He he, he came is, back. Is he back now? It was two days later. It was two days later. He said, "See you in the octagon." It was right after he posted that that tweet, uh, making fun of uh, Habib's uh, religion. Um, he, you know, and then deleted the tweet real quick because he had, he got, uh, got hold of some of Habib's wedding pictures. And so, you know, he's a Muslim and his wife had, uh, her face covered and, um, you know, I guess the texture of the, the veil kind of thought looked like a towel. Um, and, um, he was like, um, uh, Habib is marrying a towel. Um, and then he's like, uh, he came back later after that and said, uh, there's a goat under that towel, you know? And so, you know, the, and see, this is what I'm talking about, man. This is what I'm talking about in terms of, um, bad press, horrible things that you're doing and saying, um, at some point, you know, you know, I mean, this is all dude, th- this, those two things I just said, um, the phone incident. Well, I think the, Connor has plenty of bad press. I just don't yeah, think but, that but he is it makes the, people... he's the face of the UFC, though. I mean, he, I think he's the most popular person associated with it. I think right now, there's an argument to be, be made that John is definitely yeah. You know, I, I don't face think the UFC. I don't think that's an argument. I, I think, Con, but I think Connor's a, a car crash. Everybody shows up to see it, no matter what. Exactly, but at some point, at some point, the people in the car crash die, and 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 if you keep allowing yourself to be a passenger you know at some point you can be affected too and the, connor I, I man i wrote this article i wrote exactly the, the headline of the article is that the ufc needs to craft itself a future that does not include connor because it's it, because the dude is self-destructive 
Well, and, I think that's what the ESPN deal does, though. Is yeah, you get, I, you're, I hope you're so. gaining all of these so. new audience, but you know, not to trade over that topic. But yeah, I, I got I got Holloway too. Um, I think it's great for the division. I hope Connor can can come in and stop messing around with all this foolishness because honestly, I don't even want to see him fight Habib. He, he doesn't deserve a rematch off of that fight. I barely want to see him fight. Period, bro. To be honest, I, I'm at a point. I understand that, but even yeah. from just a matchup standpoint, Habib absolutely dominated you. Yeah. I need to see you fight the competition now. Like when you get your butt beat that bad, you yeah. get bumped down to contender status again. Yeah. Uh, you don't get number one contender fight the champion again. And that I'm, that belongs yeah. to Tony. And you know what else? And if Max wins, it belongs to Max. And you know what else? There's about three or four guys that I know for a fact that will beat the brakes off Connor. Yeah, he needs to fight them. And I yeah. think yeah. that'll be great because his popularity will pass over to – it'll get disseminated amongst other people. And they might not reach his peaks. But again, if you have you know, four more fighters – with plus 20% of Connor's popularity, mm -hmm. that's four more shows. And this is why I go back to the TV show versus movie thing. Mm -hmm. TV shows look for different things in a star mm -hmm. than a movie. Movie, mm -hmm. you need, you know, Chris Evans and Denzel Washington and Brad Pitt. TV show, you can get Christopher Walken to show up for an episode and get him out of here. Thanks, Christopher, for the views. Get that's up on out of here. We got another show to do next hey, week. Christopher Walken is my dog, man. That's one of my favorite well, actors. That's ever. why I brought him up. He's awesome, man. You, know? you act like I slandered him. I just gave him credit. No, yeah, he's my. But you did kind of put him on the TV level. You made him. You didn't. You no, didn't I said him. if he's a big deal if he comes to TV because yeah, there's a lot of shows. Ain't a big deal in the movies, though. No, it's a, that's math. That ain't me. Oh man, dang. <laughs>